dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Tom Drake in His Majesty O'Sullivan, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now, here is your host, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you very much, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where all the great names from the motion picture world join us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star is that popular actor, Tom Drake, and the title of our romance comedy, His Majesty O'Sullivan. This is the story of a Brooklyn cab driver who finds that he is about to inherit the royal crown of Scotland and a bride. We'll have the curtain for His Majesty O'Sullivan in just a moment, but first, here is your announcer with an important message. Your United States Army is a volunteer army. The men and women in it have chosen the Army career willingly, and they serve their country proudly. They come from every state of the 48 farms, from every walk of American life. They know the blessings of peace, and they want to do their part to help maintain peace throughout the world. They like the American way of life and want to continue it. Through the uniform of the United States Army, they see a way to serve themselves and their country. They study, train, and work. Yes, and when they have time, they play. They're happy at their job and proud of their part on the team for security, the National Defense Team. All these are part of the United States Army career. That's why yours is an all-volunteer army. Now, once again, here is your host, C.P. McGregor. And now, Act One of His Majesty O'Sullivan, starring Tom Drake. <laughs> Did you ever hear of a scout by the name of Michael Donald O'Sullivan? <laughs> That's plain silly. But wait a minute, is it now? Let's back up. In New York, there was a cabbie who, according to all available information on file in the Census Department of our great and glorious domain, was born and christened Michael Donald O'Sullivan. He was born in the year of 1900 and, uh, oh well, he's 31 years of age. He has red hair and blue eyes and a temper to go with them. On his upper left arm, he has a strawberry mark. Doesn't sound important, but wait. Oh, yes, and to complete the record, he's an American citizen. Solid. Aye, Taylor, there's more to it than appears on the record. But, Your Lordship, how can we be sure? Sure. Why, just take a look, man. Strawberry mark, upper left arm. That's the mark of a lochran. It does seem a startling coincidence. However, Your Lordship, a cab driver, and a Brooklyn cab driver at that, it's almost fantastic. Fantastic or no, I'll wager the king's crown myself that this man is he. If it's only true. Aye, our search will have come to an end. Uh, and I can go to my grave peacefully. Taylor. Yes, Your Lordship? Investigate this man, and if he be the one, bring him here to Lady Jane and me. Yes, Your Lordship. Go now. And may our prayers go with you. May this man be the man we quest for, this Michael Donald O'Sullivan. Hiya, Joe. Hiya, O'Sullivan. How are the calls going? Pretty good this morning. Just going for a pickup now. Some of the ball game crowd there, but it's field. Yeah? Who's pitching today? Well, the Dodgers are using Wyatt. And I think the cards are starting Cooper. Hey, that sounds like a pretty good bill. If I get finished in time, guess I'll run on over. Me too. Well, keep it warm here. Yeah, see you, Joe. Okay, so long, Mike. Uh, I uh, beg your pardon. Huh? Oh, taxi, mister? Uh, thank you, no. I'm looking for someone. I wondered if you could help me. You never can tell. I inquired at the main office, and they informed me that I might find a driver named Michael Donald O'Sullivan in this vicinity. Do you happen to know him? You a uh, bill collector? No. Okay, I'm O'Sullivan. <laughs> really? Well, it's very gratifying to make your acquaintance, Mr. O'Sullivan. Oh, it is, huh? Indeed. Uh, my name is Taylor, Lord Consort, member of the Court of Lochran. Uh, sounds like Greek to me. No, Scotch. Okay, Doc, skip the jokes. <clears throat> uh, well, I've been sent here to contact you at the request of his lordship, Lord McIntosh of Lochran. 
Never heard of him. What's his racket? Racket? Yeah, the pitch. What's his graft? What's he do for a living? Oh, well, his lordship is of the nobility. Oh, you mean he ain't got a job, huh? Yes. Uh, uh, that, that is no. <laughs> I'm afraid you're confusing me a bit, Mr. O'Sullivan. Sorry, Doc. Uh, yes, well, uh, to get back. We've been led to understand that you possess a strawberry mark on your upper left arm. Hey, wait a minute. How'd you know that? That it's true. Uh, may I see it, please? Hey, what's the big idea? Uh, now, don't get upset about it, Mr. O'Sullivan. Oh, uh, no. You make a habit of going around looking at people's birthmarks? Uh, please, Mr. O'Sullivan. Go on, hit the road. I don't like your general attitude. Uh, Mr. O'Sullivan, this is extremely important, believe me. I have a check here for $10,000 made out in your name. Ten grand? Ten grand for me? Yes. You see, we intend to reimburse you for any inconvenience in the event that you are not the party we believe you to be. Well, now, if that don't make a lot of sense, let me see that check. Gladly. Mm. Michael Donald O'Sullivan, $10,000. Chase National Bank. Hey, it looks like a good one. I assure you that Lord McIntosh's personal check is beyond question. Okay, I'll bite. What does Mac want me to do? Lord McIntosh would like you to join him at his embassy estate in Washington, D.C. I'm prepared to take you there. Uh-uh. Not before I call the bank and find out whether this check's going to bounce or not. If you happen to be referring to the authenticity of the check, you're perfectly welcome to call and have it verified. Okay, okay. Now, where do we go from there? What am I supposed to do after we hit Washington, if I go? There, you will undergo a complete examination. Psychoanalysis, blood check, and final lineage investigation. What was that last one? Proof of your ancestry. You have a birth certificate, have you not? Well, sure, sure. I was born, wasn't I? Very well. Now, if you'll be good enough to show me that strawberry mark. Well, okay, okay. Here. Hmm. It's perfect. A perfect replica of the Lochran mark. Well, uh, who's this guy Lochran? The Lochran history dates back to Queen Mary the First. According to our information, by the 31st cousin once removed, you are an only descendant of Her Most Reverend Majesty. Well, uh, what does that make me, the King of Siam? No, Mr. O'Sullivan. If our information is correct, it makes you the King of Scotland. And now, once again, please. How do you address a queen, Mr. O'Sullivan? Uh, Your Majesty. And a lord? Your Lordship. And an earl? Your Earlship. No, 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 no. Now, that's the third time you've missed it. An earl is addressed as Your Excellency, the same as an ambassador and a governor. Okay, okay, but I still think the whole thing's a lot of hogwash. What do I have to learn all this stuff for? I told you, Mr. O'Sullivan, every king must learn court etiquette. That's just what I mean, Doc. Look, why don't you get your marbles counted right? You know as well as I do, I ain't no king. I'm Mike O'Sullivan, Brooklyn cab driver. Sir, his lordship and I have spent years of painstaking research establishing the origin of your ancestry. I assure you there is every indication that you are possessed of royal blood. Okay, okay, I give up. If you and your pal are screwy enough to drop ten grand just for me to take a trip to Washington... And an examination. Sure, sure, an examination. Well, anyway, if that's the case, who am I to squawk? Uh, one thing, though. Yes? Well, I'm kind of curious. What kind of a cut does this guy, uh, McIntosh, get out of the deal? I beg your pardon? Oh, uh, well, I forgot. You don't speak very good English. Well, what I mean is, what's his tie-up in this thing anyway? Oh, well, Lord McIntosh and his daughter, Lady Jane, are also Lochrans, albeit not direct descendants such as yourself. Therefore, if there actually be a Lochran of the Crown, it is his lordship's desire to join this king and lady in wedlock, thus perpetuating the royal name. Well, now, if that ain't something... You mean if I come up with the winning ticket, I draw this, uh, this here babe as my missus? If you are king, Lady Jane will be your wife. Well, look, Doc, it's a good thing that I ain't gonna be king. Because nobody could ever talk me into a routine like that. When I get hitched, I pick my own wife. You know, we're kind of funny about those things in Brooklyn. Yes. Well, fortunately, Mr. O'Sullivan, we haven't crossed that bridge yet. For the present, I believe we'd best get on with the business at hand. Now, how do you address an earl? Huh? Oh, oh, an earl, an earl. Uh, he's, uh, uh, Your Excellency. Correct. Now, an ambassador? Uh, uh, uh he's the same thing, ain't he? Yes. Um, uh, Your Excellency. That's good. Very good. Uh, 
Sullivan. Wide, please, Mr. O'Sullivan. Listen, I... That's uh, it. Wider. Uh, wider. Uh, uh -huh. Now, number of teeth, 32. He has all his teeth. Eh, that's funny. Hey, look, I don't... Cross your legs, please. Hey, that's it. Ouch. Uh -huh. Now, now the other. Hey, look out. Mm -hmm. Reflexes, excellent. Funny. Now, Mr. O'Sullivan, carefully now. Who was the commanding Union general in the Civil War? Well, everybody knows that. Grant. Yes. Now, tell me, where would you find the Nepa River? Uh, of Russia, I think. Mm hmm Now, the first president of the United States. Uh, George Washington. Well, common knowledge. Good. Uh, Your Lordship, uh, doctor, uh, the blood check. I have it here. His blood is type B. Type B? Ah, yes. Lord McIntosh? Aye, Doctor. His blood checks. You mean the examination affords complete proof that this man is a Lochran. You're certain? Sire, I would stake my reputation on it. Hey, hey, now listen, fellas. I don't like to be a killjoy. Your but... Majesty. Hey, look, Mac, that goes for you, too. I... Hey, wait a minute. What did you call me? Your Majesty, it is a great day you've given to the Scots. It is that, Your Majesty. My Majesty. <laughs> well, what do you know? You guys are really sold on this thing, ain't you? Taylor, you'll make all the necessary arrangements for the coronation. We will return to Scotland for the ceremonies, Your Lordship. Aye, within the fortnight. Hey, now, wait a minute. No, you don't. Look, up until now, I've been a big, broad-minded guy about the whole clam bake. But right here's where I draw the line. If you guys think you're going to put the snatch on me, you're crazy. I don't quite follow you, Your Majesty. I ain't taking no more trips to Scotland or anywhere else. This is the end of the line as far as I'm concerned. I'm getting off. Your Uncle Mike is hitting a trail back to Brooklyn. But Your Majesty... Don't worry, Mac. I'll give you your dough back, all except the train fare. I think I deserve that. Well, so long, chums. See, Your Majesty, you cannot leave. Oh, no? Well, just watch me. Your Majesty, you mustn't go. You mustn't go. You belong to Scotland, no. I don't belong to nobody. I'm an American citizen, see? Goodbye, chums. Stop him, Taylor. Doctor, hey, your majesty, forgive me. Now, we sir. cannot let you leave the Stand room. Stand back, both you guys. You no. must not leave. Keep your hands off me. Sire, you cannot go. Keep away now. Oh, oh, so that's the way you want it, huh? What's going on here? All right, come on, guys. One at a time. And so the curtain comes down on Act One of His Majesty O'Sullivan, starring Tom Drake. In just a moment, Act Two, but first, a word from our government. We Americans can be proud that our army is composed entirely of volunteers. Yes, that's right. The only all-volunteer army in the history of the world. There are reasons why so many of America's finest men have chosen to make the U.S. Army their life work. First... There is the pride each individual soldier feels in wearing the uniform in serving his country as part of the team for security, the National Defense Team. His is a respected position in American life. Then there is the career angle. And by the career angle, we mean that the U.S. Army soldier receives some of the finest vocational training in the world in a skill or trade for which he is suited. In addition, he receives further education as he wishes to improve himself and make him a better citizen and a better soldier. He has security in his job at the same time. Yes, these and many more are the reasons why hundreds of thousands of America's finest have chosen to serve their country in the U.S. Army uniform. The curtain rises on Act Two of His Majesty O'Sullivan, starring Tom Drake as Mike O'Sullivan. Getting back to Mike O'Sullivan, we're sorry to report that Mr. O'Sullivan dropped a free-for-all decision to Lord McIntosh and his personal aides. His Majesty, now under guard, is alone in his study, rather disconsolate about the whole affair. Well, a fine thing, bunch of gorillas. To be whistling out the other side of the mouth when J. Edgar Hoover hears about this. Yeah? Come in. Your Majesty. Well, who are you? I am Lady Jane, sire. Oh. You're the dame that's got a cap set for me, huh? Your Majesty. Never mind. Skip it. What do you want? I bear a gift, sire. For me? Yes, sire. I trust that you will find pleasure in this humble offering. Oh, a book. Well, uh, thanks. I've written an inscription on the flyleaf, Your Majesty. Huh? Oh, oh, the flyleaf. Yeah, yeah. 
To His Royal Majesty Michael, in deepest affection, Cousin Jane. Yeah, well, this is swell. Thanks a million. Uh, hey, uh, wait a minute. What's with this cousin routine? We are cousins, sire. Sixteenth twice removed. You were not away? Well, uh, not until now I wasn't. It comes in as a surprise, Your Majesty. Surprise? Me surprised? What about? 48 hours ago, I'm a cab driver in Brooklyn. Now I'm the King of Scotland. I get locked up in this room because I'm going to be crowned or something. You bring me a book, and you ask me if I'm surprised. Why, lady, you may not know it, but you're talking to the original unsurprisable kid. I can understand your confusion, Your Majesty. Yeah? Well, then you're the only one around here who isn't a square. Square? I'll explain it to you later. Now, look, Jane, maybe you can tell me something. Is that guard outside my door going to keep me locked up in here for good? The guard at Your Majesty? I'm very much afraid they will. That is, until we leave for Scotland. However, the garden outside is yours. You're free to go there. The wall's too high. Nobody could climb over that. You wish to escape. Oh, you bet your life I do. I can understand that, too. Yeah? Well, say you're okay, Janie. You're okay. Looks like you and me are going to get along fine. Thank you, Your Majesty. Yeah, only do me a favor, huh? Yes, Your Majesty. Drop that Majesty business. My name's Mike. Now, go ahead, say it. Call me Mike. Very well. Mike. Ah, that's terrific. Just keep saying it. I feel like I haven't heard my name in years. Yes. Mike. Ah, that's great. Great. Thanks. Come on, cousin. Let's take a walk in the garden. I'll uh, pick you a tulip. Janie. Jane. Yes, Mike? I just figured it out. I don't know. I can't understand why I hadn't figured it out before. You said you'd help me, Jane. Of course, Mike. Okay, then. Take this letter here. Mail it the first chance you get. Of course, don't let anybody see you're doing it. I won't. Good. Janie, that letter's got to reach Joe Yubansky at the Checkered Cad Company in Brooklyn before Thursday at the latest. You won't let me down, now, will you? You can trust me, Mike. Sure, I know I can, Janie. Mike, tell me about Brooklyn. Now you're kidding. I mean, joking. No, no. Ever since I can remember, I've wondered what it was like outside my world. Even when I was a little girl, I used to sit by the castle window for hours. I'd imagine all sorts of wonderful things. Places where people lived, where, were they, where they were all the same. There were no kings or queens or little girls imprisoned in castles. Oh, Mike. Mike, please tell me about Brooklyn. Oh, sure, Janie, sure. Do they have Indians in Brooklyn like they do in... in California? There are no Indians in California, Janie. Somebody told me there were. Up near a place called... San Francisco. Oh, oh you mean the uh, Stanford Indians? Aye, that's who they were. Well, Janie, they're really not Indians. They're a football team. It's only a name, just like they call the Brooklyn baseball team, the Dodgers. Baseball? You've never seen a baseball game either? No. Well, haven't you ever had a hot dog? Haven't you ever had a bottle of soda pop? No. Oh, gee, Janie, you've really got a lot of living to catch up on. Mike, would you take me to a baseball game sometime? Show me a hot dog and a soda pop? Sure, sure, Janie. Promise, Mike? Mm-hmm. Sure, I promise. Hey. Hey, who's out there? Who's out there? Joe. My gosh, Joe. Mike! Quiet, you darn fool. You want to wake everybody up? Come on in. I thought you were never going to get here. Well, I just got your letter this morning. Hey, what goes around here anyway? I'll tell you all about it later. Did you bring the ladder? Of course. How do you think I got over that wall? Your cab here? Out in the back, just like you told me. Well, let's get going. Hey, but Mike, I still don't get... Come on, come on, and don't make so much noise. Or we're cooked. Okay, but I don't know. I don't care. Shut up, shut up. Now stick right with me. Now, where's the ladder at? Over by the path over there. Hey, be quiet. Mike. Janie. Janie, what are you doing here? I saw you from my room. You're leaving, aren't you? Yeah, Janie, yeah. Tonight? Mm-hmm. Right now. But, Mike, 
talking about the baseball game. You said... Oh, I'm sorry, Janie, I... No hot dogs. But so did Paul. No, Janie. Promise, Mike. I know, but... But I can't help it, Janie. I gotta get out of here. You understand that. You said you did. You promised. Oh, Janie, I tell you, I can't help it. I gotta get out of this place. I gotta leave here right now. You understand, Janie. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mike. Come on, Joe. Hey, cut that out. What's the matter? Just don't whistle that. Well, what's eating you? Nothing, nothing. Just quit whistling and pay attention to your driving. Okay, if it'll make you happy. Mike, would you take me to a baseball game sometime? Show me a hot dog and soda pop? Sure, Janie, sure. Promise, Mike? I promise, Janie. I promise. Joe. Huh? Turn around. What? You heard me. Turn around. Why? We're going back. Going back? That's right. Turn around, Joe. Hiya, Taylor. Oh, Sullivan, you're back. We've been looking for you. Yeah, well, you can quit looking. And you don't have to call out the guards because I came back to give myself up. I'm going to go for this king routine, but only for one reason. I made a promise to Janie. It won't be necessary. What won't be? We've just received word from the old country there's been a dreadful mistake, O'Sullivan. Hey, watch your tone, bub. I'm my majesty to you. That's just it, O'Sullivan. You're not. What are you talking about? About your 31st cousin once removed. We've recently been informed that your 31st cousin was twins. Yeah, so? One of the twins, Donald, married into the royal family. However, the other, Michael, ran away from court at an early age to marry a barmaid. <laughs> well, now that sounds more like the O'Sullivans. Precisely. Michael's wife was an O'Sullivan. Then, uh, I ain't no king? No. Well, uh, what about my strawberry mark and the other stuff? Well, you are a locker in O'Sullivan, but, uh, Yeah? Unfortunately, you happen to be a black sheep. <laughs> well, now, if that ain't rich. Does, uh, Janie know about this? I believe Lady Jane has been informed. Good. O'Sullivan, where are you going? Don't bother me, Buster. I got things to do. Mr. O'Sullivan. Hiya, Mac. Janie, have you heard about me yet? Yes. You still want to go see that ball game? Oh, Mike, yes. Yes, of course I do. Well, then, well, then, come on. We're leaving. Mr. O'Sullivan. You keep out of this, Mac. You had your chance a long time ago to make Janie happy, and all you did was mess the whole thing up. Well, let me tell you something. She's going to be happy now. For the first time in her life, I'm going to see to that. And I'm going to spend my whole life seeing to it. We're going to go to Coney Island Saturday afternoons... And every Sunday we'll be watching that baseball game, eating hot dogs, and maybe throwing a pop bottle or two at the yump. <laughs> Come on, Janie. Joe's got the ladder waiting outside. Okay, Mike. Let's go. Mr. O'Sullivan. Yeah, what is it, Mac? Please, man, wait for me and Taylor, lad. You know, we've never seen a baseball game either. Well, what do you know, Janie? <laughs> The curtain falls in the final act of His Majesty O'Sullivan. Our star, Tom Drake, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. For the young woman interested in a professional career, here is a real opportunity. The Women's Army Corps now has openings in a wide range of duty specialties ranging from communications to finance or administration. If you're between 18 and 34, a high school graduate, single and otherwise qualified, the Women's Army Corps offers you an important, exciting future. Travel, specialization, advanced learning. Visit your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station for career details. And now back at the microphone, your host, C.P. McGregor, and our star, Tom Drake. Well, Tom, that was a royal job you did as His Majesty O'Sullivan. Thanks, C.P. It was fun doing the show. Say, Tom... Before you broke into pictures, weren't you the juvenile lead in the New York stage play, Janie? I believe there was some very small print at the bottom of the program to that effect. <laughs> well, it must have been large enough for a certain MGM talent scout to read. 
For I understand it was on the basis of your performance in Janie that led to a term contract at Metro Goldwyn Mayor. Yes, and next to being the luckiest thing, I'd say it was just about the fastest thing that ever happened to me. I arrived in town on Monday, took my screen test Tuesday, and signed a contract on Wednesday. Sounds like quite a triple play. Well, the box score would have probably read Tinkers to Evers to Pasternak. <laughs> this, of course, is Mr. Joe Pasternak, the producer. This, of course, is none other. I see. Continue. Well, thanks to Mr. Pasternak, a very phenomenal thing happened to him. That me. being? That being a part in Two Girls and a Sailor with Junie Allison, Gloria DeHaven, and Van Johnson. Don't tell me you won the girls from Van Johnson. C.P., how naive can you be? Oh, you mean that when it comes to girls and Van Johnson? Naturally. <laughs> well, Tom, after seeing you, I don't think you have a thing to worry about. And say, by the way, what's your next program? Next week, Tom, ladies and gentlemen, the lovely lady of stage and screen, Mary Anderson, joins us to star in our drama titled The Miracle of San Juan Capistrano. This is a vivid story of a boy and girl in love. But the girl decides to try for a stage career before settling down to married life. She finds the key that will bring her fame and fortune, but decides that love and home have a stronger claim on her future. Be sure to join us next week. Until then, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script was by Lou Reed with the music of Eddie Dunstetter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Nile speaking. <laughs>